Good morning, Calvary. It's time for another word for the day. And, uh, and I just want to offer some encouragement as we continue our study in the book of Philippians. Uh, uh, I'm going to be wrapping up chapter three this morning. And uh, but before we dive into the, the scriptures, uh, when you were a child, uh, what superhero or, you know, just regular hero did you want to imitate? Did you want to be like you know, whose, uh, whose pajamas did you want to wear? Who did you pretend to be on the playground? Do you remember doing that as a child? I, I know uh, I watch kids today do it, and even grandkids today want to do that. Uh, you know, did you want to be Batman or Superman or Spider-Man or something like that? Because uh, then you kind of imitated them when you were playing with your friends. Or as you got older and uh, you were in high school, who did you identify with? What uh, movie star or musician or stylish person did you say, oh, I want to be like them? And you imitated their, their clothing or maybe their attitude or even their hairstyle. And don't deny it because I've seen some of those graduation pictures that a lot of you have been posting. Uh, but we, we always wanted to kind of imitate our hero or somebody we thought was cool or beautiful or wonderful. Well, we still want to imitate some people. And in fact, we still do imitate those that we learn from. And listen to what the Apostle Paul says beginning in verse 17 of Philippians chapter 3. He says, brothers and sisters, join in imitating me and keep your eyes on those who walk according to the example you have in us. For many of whom I have often told you and now tell you even with tears, walk as enemies of the cross of Christ. Their end is destruction, their God is their belly, and they glory in their shame with minds set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly body to be like his glorious body by the power that enables him even to subject all things to himself. Hey, the Apostle Paul says, be imitators of me. He says, I'm setting an example for you to follow. Now, he gets that honestly because he wrote to the church in, uh, in Ephesus, in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1, be imitators of God as dearly loved children. So there's this imitation thing where Paul is saying, look, I'm trying to imitate God, and I want you to imitate me uh, because you're my children in the faith, and I want you to imitate God because he's the one who is our father, and he wants us to imitate God because we, he wants us to reflect the character of our family, well, our family of faith, our family of Jesus. And, and so uh, we talk about character here a lot at Calvary, that you cannot represent Jesus unless you reflect his character. And so he's saying, look, I want you to follow me or people who live out the character of Jesus like I do so that you can represent Jesus to this world because there are enemies of the cross. There are enemies. We're in a spiritual battle. Again, Ephesians chapter 6 talks about that at length. I'm not going to go into that right now, but we're in a battle. And there are people who are anti-Christ, who are anti-Christian, who don't like uh, freedom of religion in the United States, who don't like the, the, just the fact that we can present the truth of the gospel with freedom. And uh, we need to understand that that's a reality in our world. There are always going to be people who oppose the gospel, who oppose Jesus, who oppose people who follow Jesus. It's been that way since the very beginning. It's nothing that is new. Uh, let me also just tell you, it's not worse than it's ever been. Okay? Uh, look, I, I know things are moving against religious liberty in the United States of America. I get that. I see that. I grieve that. But we need to go ahead and, and accept the reality that it's not worse than it's ever been. People uh, around the world right now are dying for their faith. People are suffering for their faith. Throughout history, people have been killed because of their love for Jesus. And we're not experiencing that in the United States. So we need to go ahead and have a, a better attitude. And, and then the, the third thing about the enemies that we need to think about is this. What is our response to enemies of the cross? Because I know when I read some things or I watch some things or I listen to people who are angry about Christianity, who don't like uh, religious liberty, I know my gut reaction is to kind of get angry back. And that is not the example that the Apostle Paul set for us. That is not the example that Jesus set for us. Our response toward the enemies of the cross is to love them. It's to love them. Isn't that what Jesus did? He, he loved his enemies. He prayed for those who were persecuting him, who were crucifying him. He forgave them. 
So what is our response to the enemies of the cross? It needs to be patience and kindness and gentleness. We need to reflect the character of Jesus to them, no matter how ridiculous their arguments, no matter how angry their tone, so that we can show them what Jesus' love looks like in this world. Now, that's not easy. That's not simple at all, and I'm not pretending that it is, but that is the response that Paul is advocating, and he tells us why. He actually explains it. He says, because our citizenship is in heaven, and from heaven we're awaiting a Savior. It's Jesus. He says, our identity is in heaven. Our whole uh, personhood belongs to the kingdom of God, and, and he wants that to be our primary identity as followers of Jesus. Now, this creates some tension in us, and I'm going to explain how it happens in me. Look, I love my country. Uh, you know, I have no problem pledging allegiance to the United States of America, okay? I, I, I've visited over 25 countries around this world. I've seen them up close. Ours is the best by a long shot. But here's what I know. My ultimate allegiance is not to the United States of America. My ultimate allegiance is to Jesus. He is my savior, and you know what? I'm not going to live in the United States of America uh, for eternity. I'm going to live in the kingdom of heaven for eternity because I'm going to get a new body, I'm going to get a new life, I'm going to be there, and I'm going to be with Jesus. And so my goal is to represent Jesus in this world, in this great country that I live in, that we've been blessed by our founding fathers for uh, almost 250 years. Uh, look, I praise God for that, but I want to represent Jesus to those people who are enemies of the cross, to the people who are just apathetic toward the cross, toward the people who are interested in the cross, so that they can come to Jesus. So here's my goal, and I hope it's yours. My goal, as I read this passage and I think about this, is I want to represent Jesus as a citizen of heaven. I want to imitate him as a child of God, so that whether people follow me, or watch me, or attack me, they eventually are led to Jesus. Why? Because we're citizens of heaven. We're going to imitate the Apostle Paul, who's imitating Jesus, so that we can represent him to a world that needs to know him. I hope you have a blessed day.